channel lindo limbo here and i am so excited as always to be here bringing you guys another video for this week um i'm excited because one i have my partner in crime with me today she wasn't with me in the last video so araya is back with us today and the second reason why i am excited it's also because today I'm going to piggyback off of the last video that I did for you guys. Now, y'all remember, the ones who see my video, that the last video was about products that can help you guys throughout your journey when it comes down to engorging, to milk supply, to soreness, to latching, to bleeding, everything. We touched all those bases to be able to... To help you guys make your breastfeeding journey a little bit more smoother, a little bit more easier. And I really hope that those tips help you guys out. So, with Emmy doing that video, I received a comment that asked if I could do a video on the proper way to latch. As well as different breastfeeding positions um, for moms to be able to use to be able to breastfeed a little bit easier. Um, her teddy bear is Araya Jr. Because for the things that I need to do... Araya, unfortunately, is a little bit too big, so I have to use her teddy bear for some of these things that I'm going to show you guys. So, that being said, so I'm going to tap into breastfeeding positions. Me personally, I think I've used maybe three or four latching positions this whole time of breastfeeding her, but I researched a little bit for you guys, and there's actually 11 positions, maybe even more, but there were 11 positions that stuck out to me personally that I'm going to share with you guys. I have my trusty notes here so I can make sure that I give y'all knowledge on what y'all need to know and I give y'all information that y'all need to know and the tips that y'all need to know as well so that y'all will be able to breastfeed and do whatever y'all need to do to be able to be that successful breastfeeding mom that you want to be. So, with that being said, we're going to hop into this video. But before I do that, if you are new to the Lindo Limbo channel, to my Limbo line, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe and make sure to hit that post notification bell so that you'll be notified every time that I post a video. And welcome to Lindo Limbo. So, now let's hop into this thing. So, the first position that I'm actually going to talk about is the laid, pat, laid back position, otherwise known as the reclining position. So with that position, that's the um most that's the most common position that's used when um you first have your baby. So when you first have your baby and um the doctor does skin to skin, a lot of times your doctor ends up what did you do with Araya Jr.? So you're not gonna tell me? So the first thing that your doctor does um when you all have when you have your baby is the skin to skin um technique that they always do so that your baby can get to know who you are so they baby can get your scent all that good stuff but what they're also doing with that skin to skin if you notice whenever they get your baby they always put your baby head first on your chest like this or either on your stomach area they also do that so that your baby can find their way to your nipples so that they can see if your baby's going to latch on or not and that way they'll know what they need to do if you told them that you want to be a breastfeeding mom if your baby latches on that's great um and they'll just keep on monitoring you and making sure that everything is going good before you get at the hospital and make sure that everything is good with you still but that's the first thing that they do so you'll be leaning you'll be laying down Every, every mom knows this you're laying down on the bed and they'll make sure that your baby is like this on you or like this on you on your tummy and your baby will work their way up to find one of your nipples so that they can latch on and that's when the doctor will know if your baby is going to latch or not and they need a monitor to make sure that everything still goes right with that um, this position is also good if you're having um struggles and problems with your baby latching on in any other position also if your breasts are large and you're having issues with your baby latching on because of how large your breasts are as well this position is good for that in the beginning and also if your baby doesn't like really being touched on their head while feeding this position is good as well 
um just make sure that when you're doing this position though that for your sake you have a cushion or a pillow or something of that extent so that you can be comfortable as well while breastfeeding so that's the first position that i have for you guys which is the reclining position the next position that i have for you guys is the rugby ball position or football position now with that position i use that a lot with her when she was a newborn and basically all you're going to do is make sure if we're doing the right breast all you're going to do is make sure that you have your right hand here make sure that you use that right hand to support your baby's head by wrapping your um middle finger and your thumb around your baby's head your index finger will be here and your other fingers will be on your baby as well just for support so if you have to move your baby head and everything gently you're able to control that it gives you more control so that you can help your baby latch on properly then what you would do is your baby will be tucked between your arms and this way you can see your baby very well very good as well to help you be able to see how well they're latching and then this hand will be free your left hand will be free if you're doing the right breast your left hand will be free you will use that hand to form a c or a hamburger hole and you will flip that use that to hold your breast to help guide your breast and your nipple to your baby's mouth when you do that, you're going to make sure that you latch your baby on properly. Make sure that you're guiding your baby and making sure that your baby is on that nipple and that you're able to still control his or her head and that they're comfortable as well as you being comfortable. Now, with this position, if you want to use a pillow to kind of support them as well as supporting your arms since you're going to be holding them this way, you can. I did. Um, but a lot of times, I just sat down and just held her like this. So, um, that's why I did for that. Now, this is good because, like I said, it gives you control of how your baby is latching on as well as giving you a good view of your baby's face so that you can see what's going on. Also, this position makes your baby feel safe as well because it's another skin-to-skin -skin type of thing with them being close to us, close to us as mothers. It makes your baby feel safe as well. And also, it's good for moms who've had C-sections or twins or premature babies or have larger breasts so it's good for all those scenarios okay so keep football position in mind but that's basically what you're doing here okay that's basically what you're doing here and it really works this was my favorite position with her when she was a newborn i kid you not Um, the next one, which I cannot show because I'm not laying down, but I can describe it. It's a side lying position or side laying position, which is like anytime that you're trying to relax or you're laying down, but you know that your baby is hungry or anything, you'll just lay on your side on your bed. You'll just lay on your side and make sure that your baby is also meeting you. So if I'm laying on my side and I'll make sure that she's, because I also use, this is one of the positions that I actually use to this day. You'll make sure that you both are pretty much like facing each other. And um, you'll be laying down and you'll still make sure that you're supporting for her to get the latch, him or her to get that latch. Put her or him on there. And that way you can relax while your baby is still feeding, but you're laying down and relaxing. So it's not like you're stressing yourself with standing up or sitting up to feed them. Instead, you're relaxing, laying down while being able to feed your baby at the same time. And like I said, it's very good for that. And it's ideal for... Um, relax night feeds like when you're really tired at night time and your baby is crying or everything and you just want to get your baby and feed her I, a lot of times I wake up and I get a riot and I lay back on my side and I feed her um, on my side just like I show you guys to the side she's meeting me to my side face to face and I'm latching her on so that's what I do the other good thing about this um, position is that it's also good The other thing about this position is that it's also good if you've had a C-section or if you have stitches. Um, it's very good for that because it still has you, um, allows you to be in a relaxed state while um, breastfeeding. So try that position out and see how that works for you. It works really good for me. We also have the laid back breastfeeding after the C-section. 
when you're reclining back on your bed pretty much because you know you'll be on bed rest and everything with c-section and you're letting your baby come across your shoulder and when your baby come across your shoulder you're allowing your baby to breast the latch on to you from that way and it helps um you be able to nurse comfortably it keeps um the weight and the pressure of your baby off of your wound because your wound is trying to heal at that time and um side laying is also good for that too which i just um explained to you all side laying is another good position for if you had a c-section or a stitches that's still good as well so that's the laid back breastfeeding position after a c-section the next position that i have for you all is the dangling feeding position now with the dangling feeding position i honestly don't really use it i might have used it once but i don't really use a dangling position too much um it's basically when your baby is laying down and it's while you're over them and you're letting um your nipple dangle for them to get um dangle in their mouth for them to be able to feed um it's usually done on all fours um with the mom it's usually done on all fours and you're letting your nipple dangle down into your baby's mouth so that you can breastfeed that way um you can also do it while sitting or kneeling over the baby on a bed or sofa or um almost laying down like with your like if you popped on your arm like this and laying down you could kind of let it down. now that i have done um as far as the dangling feeding position i have done like this and let her kind of like just latch on with it kind of dangling over her and she'll still latch on so it's good for that when you're doing that you need to use pillows and cushions so that you don't um strain your back or your shoulders with using that position and um you might not want to use that too regularly as well because you don't want to put too much pull on your nipple anyway even though it might do kind of good especially it's really good um it's not scientifically proven but it has been said by other moms that it helps real good like if they have block, block milk duck, ducks and lumps in their breasts it helps with that something about gravity being in their favor um so that's why some moms use it but it is good for if you have block uh milk ducks or lumps it is good for that um from reviews that i've read so you could try it out if you have issues with your milk ducks being blocked or lumps in your chest and see how that works out for you as well Um, another one is um, nursing in a sling. Now, I don't use a sling for Araya, but um, I thought that it was so cool that they had a way for moms to be able to nurse their baby if they have them in a sling. I thought that was very good. And it's very convenient when you're out and when you're watching older children or even when you're doing light chores. Like, it's very, very helpful. But it's normally done by um babies who are experienced in breastfeeding like for example if i was using a sling with her and she's eight months and we've been breastfeeding this whole time more than likely it'll be easier for me to do it than for someone who has a newborn and still trying to get the juice of breastfeeding it's gonna take a little practice either way it goes though but um it's very handy also if your baby dislikes being put down and also um if your baby feeds frequently so it's very good for um, both those reasons. And um, like I said, it takes a little practice, but for those moms who want to use slings and um, want to breastfeed their babies in a sling, um, that's a good uh, thing to practice and to try doing because um, once your baby gets experience in breastfeeding anyway, the easier it'll get with using the sling for breastfeeding if you want to. So um, I'm pretty sure it's very convenient, especially if you're using one of those slings that kind of like wrap um, I'm pretty sure that is very convenient because it you can use that to cover the baby up if you're in public for um, him or her to breastfeed as well. So I'm pretty sure that it's very, very convenient. All I can say with that is just to make sure that even if you do decide to use a sling for breastfeeding and everything, just make sure that you can still see your baby. Keep an eye on your baby. Make sure that your baby is okay um, while they're breastfeeding off of you. And the next position I have for you all is the double rugby 
ball hole or the double football hole basically it's the same thing as the rugby hole or football hole but with twins so that's why it's called double because it's dealing with twins so basically you do the same thing but you will have one on this side and one on this side and still making sure that you got everything going making sure that you watching both of them and making sure that you still have control over both heads when you do it. But it still gives you kind of sort of a free advantage with having hands free. Because if you have like the pillow to kind of support and everything, you can still kind of tend to one while the other one is still feeding. Um, if that makes sense to you all. So I think that's a really good position for if you have twins and you want to breastfeed both of them. That's really good. The other twin positions that's very good to use is on um, the cradle cross on cross across one another. Um and also the one in a rugby ball position and the other one in a cradle position. That's really good too. And also um the laid back position. That's really good. And the double upright position, which I'm gonna get to the upright position in just a second. But that's good as well for twins. So, um, the same positions that we use for just one baby, a lot of times, is very good to use for um, twins, too. It's just as effective if you have twins. Next position I have for you guys is um, the dancer hand nursing position. Now, this in particular, I have not tried, but um, I have heard about it. What it does, this position is really good to support both breasts. Um, and this is basically for if your baby struggles to stay latched or if your baby has low muscle tone or if your baby was born prematurely or if your baby has a condition like Down syndrome or has an illness or disability. So it's very good for all of those. And what you're basically going to do, you're going to form a U shape with your hand on your breast. So you're going to use your index finger and your thumb finger to form a U. And you're going to put that on your breast for your baby. And you're going to make sure that you rest your baby's jaw onto the thumb and the index finger as they feed. Okay? Now make sure their chin is at the bottom of the U. And that the thumb is gently holding the cheek. And that the index finger is holding the cheek as well. Now this will give your baby plenty of support. And it also gives the mom control over the position. And um, it gives the mom a great view of seeing their baby latching on as well. So, your baby will basically be like this. So, this baby, you'll hold your breast, bring your baby to your breast, and you're going to make sure that your baby's jaw, you're going to make sure that your baby's um, chin at the bottom, you're going to make sure that it um touches the bottom of your you that you made with your fingers to make sure that it touches the bottom of your you and you're gonna make sure that your thumb and your index finger is touching their cheek and that'll help for you to have control and for your baby to get latched on properly and also for you to be able to get a good view of your baby while they're feeding as well okay so how many is that how many positions did we go through this already, y'all? Are y'all know? It's time for me to use Miss Araya here. And we're going to start her off with the cradle hole. Now, before I get her with the cradle hole, the cradle hole or the cradle position is the most classic position that every mom wants to do with their child. But a lot of times, that's not the realistic thing that'll happen. The reason being is because a lot of times uh, with the cradle hole, that's better for when your baby is older, not so much so when your baby is still a newborn or still really small. It's not typical for that because you're still trying to get used to your baby latching on. However, when you do get to the point of being able to use this cradle position, it is really good, very effective. I use it all the time now that she's bigger i didn't start using it until she was about five months though so that kind of gives you a roundabout time frame of you know when you might feel comfortable with using it um 
but it is the most classic position that every mom pictures because they see the pictures with breastfeeding how moms up there holding their baby in a cradle position and you know it just seems like it's a perfect world of latching but that's not the case at all trust me um but uh yeah so cradle hole is good for that so we are about to demonstrate the cradle hole and then we're gonna go to cross cradle as well okay ready you ready Araya? come on all right so with the cradle position like i said you have your baby to the side like this and see she's in perfect form for me to breastfeed her if i wanted to um you will make sure that her head is in your forearm basically and that she's able to meet up with your breast and feed easily so that's basically what you all would do and this is a latching video so normally i don't want to do this but this is what we're going to do but as you can see it was easy and it's easy to breastfeed her because um this is the cradle position um, with the cradle position, it's really good for when your baby gets older. Um, with this, she latches right on. Um, but she's also an experienced um, breastfeeding baby now. So it's easy for her as well. But um, it takes her no time to latch on. Um, she's probably going to end up going to sleep after uh, eating anyway. Um, so that being said, we're not going to be able to use her for the other positions but i can easily describe them to you so the next one is the cross cradle position now the cross cradle position is a lot similar to this one the only difference is that um if you remember me showing you guys how to do the rugby position or the football position when you use um the hand that you're going to feed them the hand of the side that you're going to feed them on what you would do is the opposite so if i was going to feed her Let's say that I was feeding her in the football position on the right side and she was still hungry. I could still keep her in that same position with my hand where my um, right, how my right hand was and just move her over to my left breast. So that's basically what the cross cradle is. You're just crossing her over, but it's still a cradle position because she'll still look like this just on the opposite side and just with your right hand over there instead of it being your left hand. For a football position so um that's what you would do for that that one is a good newborn position as well good for latching difficulties too and um it also had um gives you more control on your baby um for them to latch and for you to help them out with latching as well as time goes along the technique does get better and it does get easier especially as your baby gets bigger as well so that's the cross cradle position. And the last one, I believe, which is the 11th one, is the koala position, also known as the upright breastfeeding position. Now with that, it's just like if your baby is sitting up on your lap, like so, if your baby's sitting up on your lap, and you just let them um feed off of you that way so basically it's when your baby is on top of you like on your lap or either if your baby is on your hip and it's very convenient for older babies that sometimes when she's hungry but not necessarily sleepy she will feed off of me that way um she'll sit on me on my lap and um she'll just latch on herself is this position is also really good and very comfortable for babies who are suffering with reflux like acid reflux and also with ear infections as well like it works very good for both of those to help them still be comfortable with breastfeeding and it also helps them to be close to their mom and makes them feel close to their mom so um it's really good for that as well so um those are all the positions that i have for you guys but i hope that this video was helpful for you all i hope that it helped you with positions maybe some um breastfeeding positions that you didn't even know you could use um but now you know that you can hopefully it helps you some kind of way with that like i said i'm always excited to help you guys and if you ever have any suggestions any questions just make sure that you comment down below and you can also follow me now on facebook um at lindo limbo you can also follow me Make sure that's a capital L, capital O on both names, Lindo and Limbo. Um, 
make sure that you follow you like my page so that you can um see the updates of me posting my videos and also so that you can directly message me or comment on my page or post on my page um to let me know some suggestions that you got or some tips that may have helped you that I've told um that I've discussed or um if you have any suggestions for videos or anything like that or if you just want to put something encouraging on my page for the rest of the breastfeeding moms that's on there as well like I said we're going to be a community that encourages one another during this breastfeeding journey and I'm so excited about that because we're not quitters okay we're not quitters over here we're going to keep this thing going Okay, so with that being said, I love you all. Y'all stay blessed. Um, make sure that you all like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Okay, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell notification button so that you can know when I'm posting another video. But as always, y'all stay blessed. Bye. <laughs>